Okay, here we're going to do another example of the result of the Chinese remainder theorem. So we want to solve the following system of four linear congruences. So we have x is congruent to 2 mod 4, 1 mod 5, 3 mod 9, and 7 mod 13. So we'll follow the constructed method that's outlined in the proof of the Chinese remainder theorem. So uh, the first thing to do is to calculate capital N, which is the product of 4, 5, 9, and 13. So I'll have 4 times 5 times 9 times 13. So that's going to be equal to 2,340. So that's our capital N. And in the end, we'll get a solution, and that solution will be unique, modulo 2,340. Good. So the next thing we want to do is calculate N1, N2, N3, and N4. And if capital N is the product of all four of these, the Ni are the product of three of the four where we leave off this uh, one indicated by the subscript. So this will be the product of the last three, so two, three, and four. This will be the product of one, three, and four, and so on and so forth. So in this case, we get this is 5 times 9 times 13. So uh, this can be checked to be 585. Now this one is equal to 4 times 9 times 13. So this one's equal to 468. Good. The next one is um, 4 times 5 times 13. And so that's equal to 260, 260. And then finally, the last one is 4 times 5 times 9. So that's when, that one's equal to 180. Okay, good. So now that we've got our numbers capital N and all the capital NIs, we can move on to the next step. So the next step is to solve all of these um, linear congruence equations. Ni times Xi is congruent to 1 mod little ni, where the little n's are given by these numbers. So this is little n1, 2, 3, and 4. And so notice in the proof, we know that these are invertible because the GCD of capital N and little n i's are, is 1. Good. So we need to do four of these. So we need to do 585 X1 is congruent to 1 mod 4. So that would be the first one. The next one would be 468 x2 is congruent to 1 mod 5. Good. And then uh, the one after that would be 260 x3 is congruent to 1 mod 9. And finally, we have 180. X4 is congruent to 1 mod 13. So we have these four things to solve. So we can do some simplification beforehand. We can reduce 585 mod 4, 468 mod 5, and so on and so forth. So the great thing here is that 585 is already 1 mod 4. So that means our solution is x1 is congruent to 1 mod 4. So we can take x1 equal to 1. Okay, good. So let's go to the next one. So 468 is the same thing as 3. And then we notice that 3 times 2 is equal to 6, which is 1 mod 5. So that means we can take x2 equal to 2. Okay, good. So now let's look at this next one. So 260 is congruent to 8 mod 9. So now we have to solve 8x3 is congruent to 1 mod 9. And we notice that 8 times 8 is 64, which is 1 more than 63, which is a multiple of 9. So that means we can take x3 to be equal to 8. Good. And then 180 is the same thing as 11 mod 13. 
good. And then if we notice that 11 times 6 is 66, which is one more than 65, which is a multiple of 13, then we have x4 is congruent to 6, or is equal to 6. Good. So that means we have x1 is congruent to 1 mod 4. We can just take x1 equal to 1. x2 is 2. x3 is 8. And x4 is 6. Good. So now we can move on to our next step. And so our next step um, involves forming the number x, which is equal to the sum of the xi, the ni, times the bi where the bi are given by these numbers, so 2, 1, 3, and 7. Good. So uh, let's see. That's going to be um, 1 times 585 times 2 plus, so the next bit is 2 times 468 times 1. Good. And then the next bit is plus 8 times 260 times 3 plus the next one is 6 times 180 times 7. So we formed our number x, so we can calculate that, and this tells us that x is equal to 15,906, 15,906, so that means 15,906 is a solution to this system of linear congruences. But that being said, the Chinese remainder theorem says that this solution should be unique modulo 2340. So we can re reduce this modulo 2340. And what we'll get is the following. So this is 1,866 mod 2340. So that is our final solution.